if Russia didn't have Putin? Why are the consequences so disastrous? Historical Analysis Channel has been talking about it for more than 20 years. What Emperor Putin lacks most is enemies and rivals. These people may be better able to understand the answer to this question. Let's not talk about the old enemies of the United States and the West who once dismembered the Soviet Union. There are endless opposition groups coming from within Russia alone. Among them are senior politicians who are scientists. There are also crazy people with mustaches tattooed on their chests. Of course, there are also the seven oligarchs who once oppressed the Russians. Putin once said a well-known saying. Who does not regret the disintegration of the Soviet Union? No one has a conscience. Who wants to restore the Soviet Union of the past? No one has a brain. Why is this sentence even given to enemies and opponents? It was also given to himself history will prove. Putin uses his fiery iron fist to burn those who have false reputations in the world. Welcome to historical analysis. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to support the team. Thank you. December 31, 1999. Russian President Yeltsin handed a gold Parker pen and nuclear briefcase to Putin. Then he said the words that Putin has been fighting for his entire life. Take care of our Russia. The charm of history always makes people have endless aftertaste. Yeltsin, who once fueled the collapse of the Soviet Union, putting the fate of the country in the hands of this former KGB agent. All of Putin's opponents and enemies are fundamentally. It's all related to the red giant in the old tomb in Xinjiang. But this is just the beginning. In the 30 years since the end of the Cold War, NATO's five eastward expansions. The enemy has proven it through actual actions. Russia is still too big. Dismembering Russia is the ultimate goal. Lenin, the founder of the Soviet Union, once said. Fortresses are most easily breached from within. Many years later, some elites in the Soviet Union prove this sentence with practical actions. Putin's opponents include many elites from the former Soviet Union. Boris Yefimovich and Yemtsov. He is one of the representatives of High IQ. February 2015. Yemtsov near the Kremlin. Assassinated on a bridge. He was walking on the bridge with a Ukrainian woman. The murderer stabbed him in the back. He died on the spot at the age of 56. An investigation team immediately set up by Putin arrested two murderers. But the mastermind behind the scenes could never be found. Assassinations in Russian politics are nothing new. Two leaders of the Free Russia Party, Grove Lev. Yusenkov respectively in 2002. Assassinated in 2003. And Kozlov, first deputy governor of the Central Bank. Assassinated in September 2006. Nemtsov served as deputy prime minister under Yeltsin. And his death. Then pointed the finger at Russian President Vladimir Putin. Because this person is a well-known opposition figure with very deep qualifications. Over the years, Nemtsov turned his elbow completely outward. Persevering in seeking death. Playing devil's advocate everywhere. So much so that Putin commented that he and the seven oligarchs were the same thing. It's all about money and power his mysterious death made Putin very passive. Naturally, he became the object of suspicion. Nemtsov's assassination. The truth behind it is confusing. Throughout his life, perhaps politics was not suitable for him. October 9, 1959. Nemtsov was born in Sochi. Received PhD in physics from Gorky State University in 1985. After graduation, he worked at the Institute of Radio Physics. Published more than 60 papers in the field of quantum physics. A great academic figure. His eventual change of career to politics had a lot to do with his mentor. Andrei Sakharov is known as the father of Soviet sobriety. Won the Nobel Prize in 1975. But from today's perspective. Totally humiliating the Soviet physicist. He actually won the Nobel Peace Prize. Because he was politically opposed to the Soviet Union. Advocating so-called liberalism. So he was exiled to Gorky City. That's right here. Nemtsov was defeated by this master of physics. 1986 Chernobyl nuclear power plant explosion. The worst nuclear accident in history none of them. As a result, fear of nuclear radiation spread among the public Nemtsov as a physicist. Joined an organization called Nuclear Security. Begins to oppose the construction of nuclear power plants. That's when I started getting into politics. Mentor Sakharov's yearning for liberalism. It left a mark on Nemtsov's heart. March 1990. Nemtsov was elected. People's representatives of the Federation of Russian Socialist Republics. And got to know Yeltsin. The two chatted happily and hit it off immediately. Start following Yeltsin once helped him run for Soviet chairman. He even became his right-hand man during the 819 coup. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. Yeltsin elected Russian president. Nemtsov was appointed governor of the Shia Novgorod region. As Yeltsin's local agent. He fully cooperated with various reform policies. Shock therapy. Investment promotion. Privatization of state-owned enterprises. All the arrangements for a drastic meal. In March 1996, he was promoted to first deputy prime minister. Concurrently serves as minister of energy. Won the trust of Yeltsin. 
he was even seen as Yeltsin's chosen successor. Nyantsov was only 37 years old at this time. Polls in April 1997 showed 29% of Russians consider Nyantsov as a presidential candidate. Number 1. At this time, Putin served as deputy director of the presidential office. The sense of presence is far less than that of Nyantsov. He later fell out of favor entirely because of his own actions. On the issue of the Chechen war, he openly opposed Yeltsin. Lost trust from now on. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, a series of economic reforms in Russia all ended in failure. Russia's economy was basically paralyzed in 1998. Prime Minister Chernomyrdin came out to take the blame for Yeltsin resign. Auchi General Manager Kiritenko takes over. Nyantsov's mentality completely collapsed at this time. After all, everything has been smooth sailing since childhood. His attainments in physics are even rarer. How can I tolerate such cowardice? Okay, no need for me, I will resign. Instead Putin shined in quelling the Chechen rebellion. Successfully became the future leader of Russia. August 1998. Nyantsov resigns as deputy prime minister. Joined the right-wing alliance. Founded and served as president of the Russian Youth Organization. In 1999, he successfully became deputy chairman of the Russian State Duma. And participate in the presidential campaign. But by this time, his reputation was well deserved. The support rate is only 1% and I can only run with you so he supports Putin instead. However, their political philosophies later turned out to be completely different. Nyemtsov always regarded liberalism as his ideal. It's hard to resist the charm of America's beacon of freedom. In the end, he even came to a very extreme conclusion. Why is Russia not free? It's because of Putin in the 2003 Duma elections. Liberal parties such as the right-wing alliance. Unable to enter the Duma because the votes were too low. Since then, he has been completely opposite to Putin. Almost everything is on point. In 2004. He supports Yushchenko's candidacy for Ukraine's president launch an orange revolution. Fanning the flames of the Ukraine crisis. February 2008. He teamed up with former Deputy Energy Minister Milov. Published a propaganda pamphlet smearing Putin's political achievements. Putin results. Accused Putin of having 58 planes at his disposal. And four luxury yachts. And more than 20 luxury homes. But it had no effect. Then there was internal strife among the right-wing forces. Some of them defected to the Kremlin. Others quit the arena. But Nyemtsov has no intention of letting Putin go. This person's brain circuit is also very strange. December of the same year. He joins hands with chess master Kasparov. An organization was formed to continue beating Putin. The result is very weak. After all, politics itself. Not the zero-sum game chess strives for. Year 2010. A lawyer named Magnitsky. For exposing corruption among Russian officials. He died of a heart attack in prison. This gives Western countries a handle. Nyemtsov helped Europe and the United States develop the Magnitsky List. Sanctions on Russian officials. To this end, he also launched street protests. Detained for 15 days. Putin was re-elected president of Russia in 2012. In this year Nyemtsov formed the People's Freedom Party. Hold high the banner of anti-corruption. Keep beating Putin. Crimea passed a referendum in 2014. After joining the Russian Federation, he jumped out to criticize the Putin government again. Against the pro-Russian faction that supports Donetsk and Luhansk. But these actions of his. Doesn't affect Putin's rhythm at all. The role of Nyemtsov's existence. Instead it proves how stupid these opponents are. However, within his right-wing alliance. There is no shortage of crazy extremists. Nyemtsov's death seemed more valuable to them. So in February 2015. He was intercepted and killed near the Kremlin. Corruption is the natural enemy of all political parties. Because corruption is like a bat. Only dance in the dark. So Putin's opponents. They all like to think of themselves as anti-corruption fighters. In their eyes. Nothing brings down a government more than fighting corruption. Navalny, Alec County. He is a great achiever in this respect. He had been exposed. Corruption in Russian politics and business and become famous. This guy can attract countless eyeballs just by taking off his shirt. He has a mustache tattooed on his chest. Carrying out Nazi principles unscrupulously in front of the camera. Needless to say. This guy is inseparable. He is also an unusually difficult and ruthless person. One of the former presidential candidates. According to polls. Narwani, famous as an anti-corruption crusader. The support rate is around 5% all year round. At its highest, it was even close to 20%. It's a pretty strong opposition. After graduating from the People's Friendship University of Russia in 1998, he went to study at Yale. Invested in five oil and gas companies in 2008. Later, after becoming a shareholder of the company, Internal corruption was found to be extremely serious. Begins to become famous through anti-corruption. March 2017. He posted on YouTube. 50-minute video report. 
accused Prime Minister Medvedev of embezzling 700 billion rubles, equivalent to approximately 1.4 billion United States dollars, under the control of Western media. This big melon is all over the headlines. You must know that Medvedev is the one who fights alongside Putin. And he was president. Navalny's courage is not ordinary. To beat Medvedev. He also organized large-scale demonstrations. Finally, he was fined 20,000 rubles. 15 days for sewing machine identification. But he wasn't the only one who was arrested. There are 600 people in Moscow alone. Went in with him. After his arrest. Diplomats from several European countries are very excited. CNN even filmed a documentary specifically for him. The level of this whole life is really far ahead. But Navalny. Not exactly an agent of Western countries. The mustache on his chest has told the world. He is a fervent nationalist. To put it bluntly, he is a sex Nazi. But he firmly believed that the Ukrainian nation did not exist. Crimea belongs to Russia. This made the West love and hate him. Even after he was released from prison, he did not restrain himself at all. In 2018, he accused the commander of the Russian National Guard of. Zolotov pocketed $29 million. He even spared Putin himself. In his eyes, Russia is corrupt. Call on Russians to boycott Putin's re-election. We need to understand one thing. Becoming Putin's opponent requires thresholds and qualifications. The seven oligarchs in history. I understand the meaning of this sentence very well. End of 1999. Yeltsin, 68, resigns as president. Left the center of power in Russia. At this time, Russia was already in a state of turmoil. Collapsing economy. The mired car city war. And the seven oligarchs who do whatever they want. These are the three mountains that weigh on Russia's national destiny. And the new owner of the Kremlin. How did he lead the country to make a comeback? Today's image of Putin's iron-blooded and hard-working image. From the second car city war. Putin, as acting president at this time. Not willing to throw a big banquet in the Kremlin. But after taking over Chechung. Go to Chechung capital to celebrate the soldiers. Russia captured Chechung in February 2000. Putin flew a Su-27 fighter jet in March. Flying to the capital city of Chechung. Condolences to the frontline soldiers. This driver directly brought the rebels in Chechung to their knees. Many Russian officials were also frightened to the point of peeing. Because Chechung shot down many Russian fighter planes before. While rounding up the last rebels. Putin dispatched a skirmishing force of more than 90 people. Contained more than 2,000 enemies. Today's President Katerov. At that time, he was the staff officer of the Russian police force stationed in the city. It has since become Putin's answer. The Car City War made Putin famous his iron-blooded ambition. It also awakened the bloody spirit of the fighting nation. The collapse of the Russian economy and the arrogant oligarchs. Essentially. These are all huge traumas caused by the disintegration of the Soviet Union. Berezovsky, one of the seven oligarchs. You can drive directly into and out of the Kremlin. He even said. As long as he wants a monkey. Can also become president. The self-proclaimed godfather of the Kremlin. The reason why this happens. And after the disintegration of the Soviet Union. The reforms implemented by Gorbachev began to talk about. State-owned enterprise privatization reform. The initial purpose was to promote a market economy. However, it resulted in a serious loss of state-owned assets. Powerful people take advantage of their positions. Bought a bankrupt state-owned enterprise. At that time, some companies only offered one dollar. Get ownership. Almost for free. After the collapse of the Soviet Union. Russian President Yeltsin promotes shock therapy. Hope to save the economy. Conditional on open convertibility of US dollar and ruble in exchange for U.S. economic aid. But what is waiting is not help. Instead, the ruble quickly became waste paper. To ease financial pressure. 1,992. The government converts state-owned assets into 148 million checks and orders. Face value 10,000 rubles each. But you can get it for only 25 rubles. This is selling state-owned assets at a low price. It's just drinking poison to quench thirst. Not surprisingly. Some powerful people purchased large quantities of flat orders and acquired a large amount of state-owned assets in a short period of time. In the end, the government couldn't even pay the salaries of civil servants. Putin retired from the Soviet KGB. I even had to drive a black taxi to support my family. In this national crisis. The rise of seven oligarchs. Said with no exaggeration. More than half of Russia's wealth. It's all concentrated in the hands of these seven people. These people control Russia's. Key economic fields such as finance, media, and oil. Before the 1996 Russian presidential election, Yeltsin's domestic approval rating is only 3%. In order to seek re-election, Yeltsin had to ask the oligarchs for help. If Yeltsin's rival, Zyuganov was successfully elected. I'm afraid it will endanger the interests of the oligarchs. So they chose to support Yeltsin. Hire a professional team to create a people-friendly image. It completely replicates the gameplay of Western democratic elections. Soon after, 
Yeltsin's poll approval rating surges to 53%, successfully re-elected as president. However, these oligarchs are not content to stay behind the scenes. At the inauguration ceremony of President Yeltsin, seven oligarchs make a collective appearance, declare to people, they are the new masters of Russia. Then these oligarchs successfully entered politics, became a member of the state Duma. Berezovsky served as government industrial advisor, deputy secretary general of the Federal Security Council. Media giant Gasinsky monopolizes newspapers and radio stations. Khodorkovsky won it in one fell swoop. 30 large state-owned enterprises, including Russia's largest oil company at the time, Ukes Group. 2003 merger of Ukes and Sibneft. Become the fourth largest oil company in the world. During the later years of Yeltsin's term, he has discovered the seriousness of the problem. Russia has been hijacked by these oligarchs. Reformists within the Kremlin. I have fought many times with oligarchs. The result was a bloody head and a broken family. Yeltsin knew he had no way to save himself. We can only place our hopes on the successor. By constantly changing the prime minister. To find suitable candidates. But these people disappointed him very much. Including young talents with a background of scientists. Nemtsov. Yeltsin holds a high position. But extremely insecure. This reminded him of his own experience in 1994. A near miss experience. At that time, he and a group of government officials. Vacation in the forest. Suddenly during the banquet. A brown bear appeared in the jungle. Leader of the beast killer rankings. In an instant, everyone fell into panic and chaos. The situation is extremely urgent. At this time, a young man who arrived late. Raising the shotgun coolly. One bullet made the brown bear take the lunchbox. This man is the future Emperor Putin. Very military temperament. Putin, who served in the former KGB for many years. With cold and heroic actions. Conquered everyone present. 1996. Putin chief of staff in presidential office. On the recommendation of Chubai. Come to Moscow to work. Yeltsin suddenly realized. This ex-KGB agent. Isn't he the successor he is looking for? March 1998. Yeltsin appoints Putin. The orphan who ran the Soviet KGB. Russian Federal Security Council. At this time, Yeltsin's approval rating was only 2%. In this case. Can still run the Kremlin. Thanks to Putin's protection. August 1999. Putin becomes Russian Prime Minister. Popular presidential candidates. But media oligarch Gushinsky. Support former Prime Minister Primakov. In order to help Putin clear the way, Yeltsin. Found Berezovsky. He united with other five oligarchs to support Putin. The reason is simple. Because Putin has no power at this time. Will not pose a threat to them. If Gushinsky teamed up with Primakov. Not a good thing for them. Because among the seven oligarchs. It's also an open and covert fight. Chables and warlords alike. The best thing is melee. What they never expected was that. This time Yeltsin wanted to. Russia the country. Putin has also become the gravedigger of these oligarchs. After coming to power, he used his victory in the Chechen War too. Showing his true nature as an iron-blooded emperor. At the same time, he established a very high prestige in the military. This laid the foundation for him to clean up the oligarchs. Power comes from the barrel of a gun. No matter how big the money bag is, it must be controlled by the barrel of a gun. Ability to destroy opponents from the physical level. It is the ultimate secret of dictatorship and all dissatisfaction. Putin's strategy is to be courteous first and then to attack with force. Talk to the oligarchs very seriously. Two requests were made. No problem doing business first. Don't interfere in politics. Second, don't evade taxes. But this group of plutocrats who don't know the heights of the sky. Disdainful of him at all. They have no idea what the KGB can do. So Putin plans to start by attacking the driver of the media giant Guxing. Let's test the reality first. On the one hand, because the media is very important. On the other hand, it's because he has a bad relationship with the other six oligarchs. May 2000. The federal prosecutor's office takes sudden action. On the grounds of allegedly embezzling and defrauding huge amounts of national property. Detain Guxing driver. All his media outlets began to report his news frantically. Even what he had for dinner on his first day in prison made headlines. However, the Guxing driver was released within a few days. This made other oligarchs happy. They wish he died in prison. And then buy his property. Guxing driver knew his end was approaching. This new president is not a soft persimmon. So he sold his property to the government at a low price. Go into exile obediently. Putin is killing the chicken to scare the monkeys. August 2000. Russian nuclear submarine Kursk suddenly exploded during exercises. Berezov's most stubborn driver among the oligarchs. Seized the opportunity to criticize Putin. At the same time, a very high-profile announcement was made that donations would be made to the families of the victims. This pull and step is just to embarrass Putin. In the end, Putin gave him a slap in the face with his backhand. Ordered the Russian tax service to investigate his companies. 
As a result, there were no unexpected findings. Two companies controlled by him actually colluded with foreign forces to launder money. Then Berezov's crimes were made public. Soon the whole public opinion suddenly turned towards Putin. Because the media at this time has been taken over by the government. It rules out capital distorting the facts behind the scenes. Subsequently, the National Procuratorate charged him with a series of crimes including money laundering, tax evasion, and fraud. Berezov driver wanted. And froze all property in his name. He was still in France at that time. I can only kneel down and beg for political asylum from Western countries. Then in 2003, Putin and the richest man Khodorkovsky. When discussing economic policy issues on live television, this man is so hot-headed that he sharply criticizes the Putin government. Putin's backhand is a king bomb, pointing out tax evasion by Yuk's oil company. Khodorkovsky froze on the spot. However, he still refused to give up and continued to commit suicide. During a negotiation with BP, Putin proposes plan to increase taxes on crude oil. As a result, he tried every possible means to thwart this plan. He didn't even know what he was saying to BP. His people have taken control of the country's horse racing. You won't have to pay taxes anymore. Completely exploded Putin's minefield. He said that famous saying. Anyone who disagrees must die or leave. Khodorkovsky looks set to follow in Gushinsky's footsteps. We are going to take 51% of the shares of Yuk's oil company. Sold to ExxonMobil in the United States. He dares not sell it to the United States, but he dare not buy it. During Putin's visit to the United States in September 2003, met with ExxonMobil chairman Redmond. Redmond told Putin about this. This means Khodorkovsky is preparing to commit treason. After returning to China, he committed commercial fraud. Arrested for tax evasion and other crimes Suk's oil company is re-nationalized. In 2005 he was sentenced to eight years in prison An additional eight years were added in 2010. Pardoned by Putin and released from prison after 10 years exiled to Germany. Vinogradov and Malkin also went bankrupt. The one who was so arrogant in 2013. Berezovsky, the so-called godfather of the Kremlin committed suicide at home. Only Friedman listened to Putin's advice got a good death. Do business honestly and don't touch politics. Looking at these opponents or enemies from within. They never seem to care about the fate and future of Russia. He doesn't care about the West's attempts to dismember Russia. Today people still remember. Putin's solemn oath 20 years ago. Give me 20 years to give you a strong Russia. Former US Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, who has passed away. I once said something like this. Russia under Putin is the international order. Indispensable component. Time gives the answer. Iron-blooded wrists can bring peace to troubled times. Burn everything in the world that is in vain. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for your support. We warmly welcome you to speak your mind in the comments section. Don't miss our next episode.